filming, editing, it takes a lot of time. If you don't do things right, in the right way, you're gonna struggle after. I'm gonna tell you about two things that they are going to change your life. I mean, it changed mine. Maybe you know, but what if you don't know? Oh my, <laughs> it's been a bliss. I don't have a desktop, I have a laptop. And my laptop is a bit oldy. She's from mid 2012. So she's an old laptop, I mean if we talk about technology and how things go today. Eight gigabytes of uh, RAM, so you can imagine. And I also have a hard drive inside, it's not SSD, so you can imagine what I'm talking about. Maybe you're like me. Final control for editing, and I'm using a Canon EOS R, and I'm filming a lot, always. I open Final Cut Pro, I import my footage, and I start editing, but many times you get this message, and many times I was getting the beautiful rainbow ball that I love so much. The more I was editing, the more I was getting the message. It was getting on my nerves. Chatting with a friend was Chan. I would like to get out of here. She told me, do you open Final Cut Pro in your computer? Do you create your libraries in your computer, in your laptop? I say, yeah. Where should I do it? She told me, no, no, no. You should do it in an external hard drive. So you'll see how fast things will go. A new thing for me. So next thing I did is, as you can imagine, I just went on Amazon and I, oh yeah, I love these RF lenses. Oh yeah, this is amazing. This is the 24 to 105. I bought it with a camera and uh, the one I want now is the 15 to 35. Yes. Anyway, so uh, first thing I did is, let me put it here. First thing I did is I went uh, on Amazon and you know, and uh, yeah, I, um, <laughs> external hard drive, you know, I get a list of external hard drives and then, uh, but I see different prices. And the first thing I said is, why should I get one that cost a hundred euros when I can get one that cost 60 euros, no? You know, this is the first thing you normally do, you know, <laughs> it's, the, it's the normal reflex. And so I got this bad boy here, which is a WD for 60 euros, really good, two terabytes, excellent. The thing is that I did something wrong. I started using this for doing my my library in Final Cut Pro and to storage footage. So, as a consequence of that, this bad boy here started getting filled up and filled up and filled up and it was full within uh, a week. You know, you have all these things in the background, rendering, and every time you have to clean your library. <laughs> so what I did is that I used to, when I finished with the video, I took all those footage and I deleted them. Yeah, don't judge me, I didn't know. I started searching and searching and then I realized what I was doing wrong. There are actually two kinds of uh, external hard drives. Are the external hard drives that you are supposed to storage things, archive things, and there are external hard drives that you should use for editing, they are very small and they are very fast because it's SSD. And uh, and then I got it. It's this one. It's so small, so light, and so fast. This is the Samsung T5. One terabyte. This comes with two cables, the normal USB 3, two USB-C, and another cable USB-C to USB-C. Let's say that I have uh, three or four footage of um, 20 seconds, maybe a minute, short stuff. And I go to my computer to import them, and I use a normal external hard drive, 
and it takes about four, five, six minutes. On the other hand, if I put this and I import this to this, it takes about, what in the other one, it takes about four minutes, here it takes half of the time or maybe less. And I'm not using C USB. Not cheap because uh, this cost almost $200 for one terabyte. But anyway, I'm gonna put the right prices down there in the description. I was hesitating between taking the one 500 gigabytes and, um, and this one one terabyte, but you know, 500 gigabytes comes in, uh, they come in different colors actually. They come in, uh, in some kind of green, very cool. They come in red, they come in gold. And this one, this one, one terabyte comes in gold or black. So I got the black one. Final Cut Pro, I open a library and, uh, and then I open a new project and I start working on this. I export all the footage to this because I'm gonna be working with this. When I finish with my video, I all that footage that I'm not gonna use, I transfer it from here to here. And I use this one as an archive for all my footage, which is actually the way we should do. I didn't know. It, this is a good way to do it. And uh, if you're having problem with speed, if you're having any kind of problem with the not performing things, not performing well, this is a good way. The other thing I've been having problems with is adjustment layers. And I used to drop my footage on the timeline. I used to do all the editing, no? I used to cut all the pieces I didn't want and when I finished with that, I used to drop a adjustment layer. There, I used to adjust exposure and shadows and mid-tones and crank up a little bit saturation. Second thing, I used to drop another adjustment layer, uh, the look, look great, and I used to have my, my numbers for my colors. Then I used to drop another adjustment layer and I used to put a little bit of a vignette. The thing was getting so slow. I mean, the thing was slow, but the thing is, everything changed when I decided to go with a 2.1 aspect ratio. Now, what I do is, now my friend saw me. Well, hello everybody. He told me that he does in another way. He exports everything to a compressor. I don't do that. But what I do is that I open a project and instead of having a project or 4K or 180p, I put custom. With those numbers, you're gonna be able to get out of the matrix. 3840 by 1920, no? Which is 4K 2.1. When I drop the adjustment layer on it, go to sleep. Go to sleep because you're not gonna be able to do anything else. At least this was me. Really slow, everything went so slow, it was terrible, terrible. So I said, what's going on? And everything was after I uploaded to Catalina. It was impossible. So what I did was, I kind of uh, send the adjustment layers away. What I do now is I film, I drop my footage on the timeline, and I, I click on the footage, I go here to the right, and I put, instead of fit, I put fill. Boom. Then, next thing I do is, I adjust a little bit, not much. The exposure and the saturation, not much, just a little touch. Then I use only one, if necessary, I only use one adjustment layer. I put it on top of everything, and on that adjustment layer, I drop a lot if I use any lot. I'm using a lot for the first time. When you use a lot for the first time, you go crazy. You, whoa, colors here and colors there, and it's really fun. But then you start seeing that the more natural you go with colors, the better actually your things are, because colors are more real. Of course, if you crank up saturation to the sky and you crank up 
uh, all the things, there are lots of other things, then everything is gonna look nat natural. One of the things that has been giving me more problems with color is actually white balance. You know, we always have stronger things and weaker things. So, you know, for me it's white balance. I still, I still struggling. I mean, when, when I film outside, of course I use daylight. But if I film inside, I, I have these lights here, which are white lights. And, and I have, but then I have the light that comes from the window, which is a daylight and etc. So I, I don't know if I put daylight, the project come, have the tendency to come to, to, to come out to orangey. And, um, and if I put uh, other kind of lights, it becomes too, too, too bluish and, and, uh, Maybe, maybe I will need to buy that gray stuff to do a custom white balance. People help me please, because I need help with white balance. This morning I woke up and everything was super foggy, it was beautiful and uh, oh man. And the things that you know that I love the most is that this thing keeps me keeps me uh, uh, creating. Thank you so much again. I'll see you again in another topic, Ruben. Stay safe and wash your hands. Keep rocking.